So gang, it's Saturday morning again, which means factory time. Um, they're having a lot of work done here. And uh, today in this video, can I show you a little bit of what I do? But I also want to talk about pricing of commercial jobs because that's something that a lot of you guys have been asking. So I have just got these downstairs ones to do and then I'm going inside, but it's turned a bit wet and uh, drips coming off me hat, getting a bit damp. It's nice and warm though. So yeah, so this video is all about how to price for commercial jobs. Um, and we've priced for a couple of jobs this week and one of them was a big school that I think um, three of us will be there for three or four days. It's a massive secondary school, three stories high um, and it's gonna come out really well. The windows haven't been cleaned in a long time. So it's gonna be really hard to do. But I keep getting asked uh, from loads of you guys, um, how do you price uh, commercial work? And it's a really good question. And I suppose there's a few different elements. And before I start into how I price for it, it depends really how busy you are in your business. Like if you're not very busy um, and you're on Facebook, but you don't have uh, that much of a portfolio built up yet. So say um, you'd love to get the little, you'd love to get this big factory or you'd love to get something like that so that you can put it up on Facebook um, of you working at the job, maybe like a clean window, maybe a picture of you doing the job and, and that would look great. Put it up on Facebook so that you can get more work like that. I can see why you might charge slightly cheaper than what you should for jobs like that, just so you can build your portfolio and put it up on Facebook. But um, there's a few things to think about um, when it comes to commercial work that means you should charge more than you think you naturally would. So for commercial work, you have to have your insurance and you have a lot of the commercial work that we do, we have to provide like a tax clearance certificate and we have to write up a method statement and a method statement, which I've said before, is detailing how you're going to do the job that you do. Um, and then a risk assessment. So what kind of risks you pose on site or on the uh, on the plant or factory um, they want. Now, again, you can get templates for that kind of stuff online, but they need all that kind of paperwork first before they let you come to the job. And again, that can take time. Um, it can seem a bit daunting, but you can download templates online and kind of like adjust them to yourself. And normally the companies are completely fine with it. Um, but for the company to put you on their system, it's quite a big ordeal for them. Like they might have to have a safety meeting with you. They need to review your safety papers. You need to have in Ireland a safe pass or in England, I think it's a CSCS card. You have to have all those things. They need to see that first. They need your bank account and stuff like that to set you up on with their account system. So for a commercial job to take you on, it's a huge hassle. Like everyone is busy in these jobs doing their own thing. And the last thing they want really is to be changing a window cleaning supplier. So it has to be bad enough for them to need to want to do it. So their supplier at the moment either has to be really rubbish or they might not have a supplier at all. So bear all that in mind that you're going to spend hours <coughs> at the start um, preparing for all of that stuff. And I know um, that we spent hours doing that for the factory that I'm in today. <coughs> Um, once a year, I have to do um, a safety test for them that takes about an hour to watch a, a few DVDs and answer a test at the end of it. So that all has to be factored into it. Um, again, I'm having a no uniform day today because I just felt like it. No one's around in the factory. Uh, the security guard unlocks all the doors and lets me work away. Um, but again, hard hat boots, all of that sort of stuff. So there are a few extra little costs to it in comparison to doing uh, domestic work. Um, also, the terms of payment are longer. So for a factory, the, the minimum is 30 days. And sometimes a lot of factories might bill on the 20th or the 30th of the month. And so if you clean the windows on the 6th, 
they can take 30 days from the 30th. So sometimes it can be 60 days to get paid. And sometimes if you're not strict with them, they'd like to go an awful lot longer than that as well. So it's payment isn't there straight away. So again, there has to be a cost to that to them compared to the domestic customer that pays straight away. So you know you're gonna get your money, but it's gonna go straight and it's gonna go straight into your account, but you don't know when. Or for some reason in some factories, payroll has been on holidays and our bill has been forgotten about. And so we've been waiting 90 days. Um, and again, I suppose that's the benefit of doing commercial and doing uh, domestic work. Um, you know, it's, it helps with cash flow because like the school that we're gonna do next week for three days, three of us, uh, I might not get paid that for a month. So again, it swings and roundabouts so it's paid well. So how to price the actual job? Well, what you have to realize when you go into a commercial premises is that you're not gonna be able to just walk around the same way as you would when you arrive at a private job. Uh, and I suppose here, I'm especially talking about factories and offices. Um, other places might be different. Um, smaller commercial places like shops, you might not have this. Um, but I know a lot of the factories that we call to, um, they're signing in at the security hut. That takes 10 minutes if you're in a queue waiting for people. And that's just 10 minutes you have to add on to the job. Um, again, you could call around different rooms. Different rooms might be locked. You might have to get keys from the security guy to open different rooms that are locked. Um, there might be meetings on, like I know on a factory that we're going to on Tuesday, because I know the run of the place, I know what time to get there before certain rooms start to get too busy. Um, but if you arrive there at normal opening hours for the factory, um, you'll be told that there's a training meeting on in this room, there's a training meeting on in that room, and uh, you can't get in there for another couple of hours, or you can't get in there till they go on their lunch. Um, there's always loads of bits of hassle. There's desks up to windows with paperwork and somebody's on the phone and they'll say call back and do that one in half an hour, or leave that one till the end. So don't look at the building and think, right, if that was, if I had no hassle and it was empty and it was a private job, um, I could do that um, from eight o'clock in the morning until two o'clock, that's fine, that's, that's no problem. Instead, what I do is I'll just charge a rate for the day for that whole place. Because then when two o'clock comes and you still can't get into two rooms or three rooms and uh, you you know somebody can't find the key for another room and they'll come back in 20 minutes with the key, you can go for a coffee in the van waiting for that and you know you've been paid your full day rate up to five o'clock that you're not sat there in the van at two o'clock going, when will so-and-so ever find the key to that room? Because I'm not being paid for sat around. I could be doing other jobs, I could be. Whereas often what can happen is we're done for half two and it's great because we got paid for the whole day. And then we go and squeeze in another couple of houses to finish off the day until maybe five o'clock or something like that. But don't get yourself in such a pickle price-wise. Price it well so that you're expecting that kind of hassle because it will come and if it happens it's just do you know what guys let's go for a coffee we'll come back in half an hour when they have the keys or when that meeting is finished and then we can fire on and then you're not losing anything and i suppose that brings me to the core principle of when i'm pricing up commercial work is and i did this when i was doing the school uh, we went round the school dividing each side into the amount of hours it would take and then we might add on a quarter of that time just for, you know, crap happens, you know. So we, we add on a quarter and we go around and we worked it out into how many days that it would take. So we, we estimated, I estimated the school to take from three to three and a half days probably three days for three of us, or if we only have two of us for two days, we might have a, a one extra for the third day, uh, if he can only do one of the days. So, because he's part-time, 
so that's that's what we're planning on that job and then what i do is i then take the day rate that we have and then i and then i just it's easy the day rate multiplied by three and a half not three but three and a half just in case something happens and we have to go back for that uh, that last day so again how do i work out my day rate and that's something you need to know for yourself so what i do or how i originally worked out my day rate is i pick my good my one of my best paid days window cleaning and some of our best days window cleaning actually isn't doing fancy houses but it's on some of our estates where it's we do 50 in a day and then we'll do and that will only take us until one or two and then the afternoon we'll go and do a few big houses so i might work out our day to be so many hundred um which and it's and it's a big figure so i work it out and i do that so really and now again it pays me because we're busy enough at the moment that i can have this luxury but why would i take on the hassle of a commercial job for less than the day rate that I could get doing normal houses. And I suppose that's then how I price other houses. So if I get a mansion call me and they want this big massive place done, I know, well, if I'm in town with no travel doing some of our estates, we'll have made this much by lunchtime. So if that big house is gonna take us that long, well then that's how much it's gonna be. Or then you can break it down into an hour and say, well, for the two or three of us to be somewhere, we would make this much an hour on such and such a street. So that's what we need to be making elsewhere. So that's really what I do. That's how I come up with the day rate, and that's how I come up with... Now, on this school, I've actually knocked 50 euro off of our day rate, and that's because I've charged them for three and a half days. So there is that little wiggle room of, do you know what, there's no travel... Um, I'll probably have to go at seven o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock till half eight, doing a few shops on a few mornings anyway. So put that into the day rate and we're still over our day rate once we've done a couple of hours of shops early in the morning. So that's how I price the commercial stuff. I look at it and I break it down into time. And I think to myself, right, that is gonna take so many hours to do. So our best rate that we get is X amount, so that's what I'm gonna charge for that job. Um, and I know of guys that do, now none of you are followers, um, I know from quoting different hotels, there's a massive hotel near me, and they price it at sweet FA, absolutely small, tiny, tiny money, and they arrive with a van of Polish lads and do it, and they travel half from the other side of the country to do it. Whereas why, I know it all looks good. You know, the commercial stuff does look good on Facebook. But why do that for far less money than what you could on regular, repetitive uh, domestic work? It doesn't make sense. And another thing is some of our commercials are monthly and they're great jobs. Monthly jobs, you know, the run of the place, You, I, I could be blindfolded and do the job. And some of our other commercials prefer to ring us every three months and they're filthy when they do it. So all I'm saying to you is if you think a job is going to take five hours for you alone, what's your best rate that you earn by yourself? Is it 30 or is it 40 or is it 50 euro? Whatever your best rate is that you get on some of your best houses, my advice to you. Now, again, if you're desperate for work, don't listen to me. But if you have enough work and it would be a bit of a supplement or it would just look good on Facebook, what's your best rate you get? Do you think it'll take five hours? Charge for seven. Do you think it'll take three hours? Charge for four and a half. You get my gist. That's how I price my uh, commercial work. I know there's going to be extra hours into it in preparing. I know I'm not going to get paid straight away. But because we're 50-50% domestic and commercial, I know that I can carry the whole ship on the domestic work and when the commercial stuff comes in, it's a bonus and it helps pay for taxes and van insurance and public liability insurance and equipment and uh, stuff like that. So guys, that was my video for how I price commercial stuff. How you do it is completely up to you, but just don't 
underprice yourself because of the trickiness of getting in and stuff. And if you have underpriced yourself on a job, every year try and put on another 10% onto it. Or on other jobs like we, what we've done is they've asked to put on a security hut or two or an extra building and stuff like that and use that as you're already in, they're not gonna to go to a new supplier. If you're already in, use that as an opportunity to add on the 10, 20% that you should add on at the start. All right, guys, thanks for watching.